confidence in your heart rather than fear, phobias, and all kind of um, apprehension that is so easily to be, uh, to connect to those things because our society lives in that atmosphere and in the natural scheme of things, it's normal to them. How many of you understand that? But then Jesus gave a prophetic utterance about fear. He said in the book of Matthew, the, old, uh, the, the latter part of Matthew, he said men's heart would fail them because of fear of those things that were coming on the land. So he said that people's heart would begin to fail, not because they were sick. He said because they were so afraid. Oh, yeah, you, you got to hear that. He said that we would come in a time in our society, and uh, I don't know, I, I don't want to say we're here now, but I'll leave, the, I'll leave that to your own interpretation. But uh, the Lord said that we would come to a time that men's heart would fail them. Huh? Not because they ate too many chitlins. He said it would fail. <laughs> you know that? That'll make your heart fail. Well, yes, it will. I say, yes, it will. But that ain't what he said. He didn't put it on the chitlins. <laughs> he said their heart would fail them because of fear. Because of what? Because of fear. And you can see that in uh, um, Luke. 21 and 26, men's heart would fail from fear or terror or apprehension. Amen. So afraid that the heart stopped. I'd like you to open up your Bible with me to the book of Psalms 91. Let's go back to our foundational scripture on that. And I want to share a few things uh, with you around this tonight that I believe that will be good for your study lessons. How many of you hear me? Yeah, these, these things I'm sharing with you in these teachings here, they're for you to go back and study them. Amen. Study them out, and then you'll not only get the, the revelation and the light of it, but you'll be able to help others who are walking in darkness when it comes to these things that will try all of us. Amen. And I can tell you now, you can, you can, you can, you can, uh, um, you could know for sure that there are going to be some situations where the truth of these uh, teachings are going to be necessary for you to, to live in victory. In Psalms 91, starting at verse 1, it said, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. I'm reading from the NIV, so that's why my, uh, uh, my variation is a little different for yours, but we end up in the same place. He who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Ain't that beautiful? That there's a place in God you can rest. I mean, you know, when you talk about resting, it is the absence of fear. Huh? And fear can come to you for, for so many reasons. Well, I, I won't even begin to deal with all the reasons why men and women live in fear in the times we're in. But there, there are so many of them. And... Uh, I do know that God can bring you to a place that you live beyond the terror that's in our land. And it said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I, in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Verse 5, read it with me. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flied by day, nor the pestilence that stalk in darkness, nor the plague that destroy by midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. And the believer shall say, you ought to praise God right there for that good word. Because what he's telling me and you, that we can live and don't be afraid. 
Now, I, I'm telling you now, people th will tell you. Now, there ain't no such thing that everybody's afraid of something. Well, the Bible didn't say so. <laughs> the Bible didn't say so. The Lord told everybody that follow him, be not afraid. Only believe. Told Joshua following Moses, he said, be of good courage. Be courageous. You know, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then he said, but only be thou courageous. Then he also said, be strong. Why do you have to tell somebody, be courageous, be strong? Huh? Why you got to tell them that? You're telling them that because some things going to come to challenge what I've said to you. That's why God's telling you that. And that's why he's telling me and you what he's telling us about living beyond the terror that's in our land. Because there will be circumstances, there will be situations, listen to me, and you better believe me, that the devil himself creates to do nothing but circumvent the faith that's inside of your heart that is necessary for you to please God. Your good looks, it's all right. Thank God for them. But that don't please God. Huh? The Bible shows us, and I showed it to you when we were talking about uh, over there in Matthew uh, 16, Matthew 16 and 13, where Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. He said, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Prior to that, he told them, blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. I share it with you Sunday, for every situation, there is a spiritual truth and a natural truth. What I say? And the, and the spiritual truth will change the natural truth. I don't care what it is. It can be changed by spiritual truth alone. For every situation, you have a natural truth and you have a spiritual truth. And the spiritual will change the natural. Now, I said something to you and I want to say it again to you because you need to understand this. That's why it's so important that we understand when Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church, he's telling you, I am the builder of my church. And when you talk about the church, you're not talking about these four walls here because this is, this is a building. The church is me and you. Me and you is the church of the living God. So what the Lord is saying, I will build you the way I build you. Talk to me. And he can build anything. And I want to tell you something about the Lord and his building. He don't stop till he finish. Come on, somebody. So whatever he start with you, he finishes it. And nothing intimidate him when it comes to finishing what he started. So he said, I'll build my church. And he told Peter, he said, but blessed are you. For what was revealed to you was not by flesh and blood, but my father, which is in heaven. So he was in essence telling Peter, Peter, you got inside information that's outside of human reason. You know something that your head didn't teach you. You know something that you didn't go to school and learn. Thank God for education. Thank God for the, 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 the academic learning of the land that has its place. But when it comes to spiritual things, you must respect that there's a higher law. Amen. And, and he said, that's what I build on. So in essence, what the Lord is saying, I build by revelation knowledge. You see, once you get a revelation of any truth from God, it empowers you to walk in the power of that truth. So, so many people can sit down in a, in a Bible study on a Sunday service and, you know, preachers like me who can teach and preach it both. I can teach you into a frizzy sometimes. But, but the, the, that alone is not enough to give a person victory, believe it or not. That, you know, thank God for great preachers that are in the land that can preach you till you need an oxygen tank to come up for some air. But that alone don't guarantee you victory. I'll tell you why. Because, because until it come inside of your heart and, and the light come on. So that's how you know God's book is the Bible. This book ain't like no other book you read. I don't care what it is, because this book is God breathed, meaning God is in the scriptures. And at any given time, a scripture can come alive right while you're looking at it. 
and you thought you had read and understood and all of a sudden you see so much more than when you read before. So what that go to show you that the scriptures is just full of the life of God. And, and at any given time, God can give you something out of one scripture that you don't read in one season. And he'll take that same scripture and give you something that is so relevant to what you're facing or going through right now. And by getting that light, it dispels fear from you. It dispels darkness from you. Talk to me. It take anxiety off of you. It take depression from around you. Come on, talk to me. Yes, it will. It'll liberate your spirit. And it's not but the scripture. Matter of fact, let me be honest with you. You know, you can get that and nobody just you just reading it. I ain't got to preach it to you for you to get it. No. God used preachers, but he ain't limited to us. Give me some help here. Because in Revelation, he said, blessed is he who read it. He said, when you get through reading, a blessing hits you. <laughs> There's a blessing come on you when you read the word of God. I can read the Bible sometimes. I get so full, I have to put it down. Just put it back. Go, oh, wait a minute, Lord. Wait a minute, Jesus. I mean, you get so full because the word has the spirit connected to it. And so why I said all that to say this to you, because in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there's no vision, the people perish. Where there's no what? Vision, the people perish. But when you look that word up, now, of course, the Bible does talk about visions. Matter of fact, when I was in England this time, I taught something over there. I never taught here at home. I taught about the exceptional quality that was in the Old, in the Old Testament prophet life. And for a whole week, I taught on nothing but Daniel and the exceptional qualities that made Daniel who he was back through several empires where his life outlasts every empire he lived in. Powerful. He's... He outlived kingdoms and kings. Talk to me, somebody. He became, he became the highest up in the presidential, uh, in the kingdom, and a foreigner at the same time. Give me some help here. Huh? What? <laughs> you got to have something working for you, brother, that you become president of the presidents. Well, that's what Daniel was. But one of the things we saw, he was a man of many visions. And when we see visions like that, that's when God just open up and show you something. But when they talk about that in Proverbs 29 and 18, it says, where there's no redemptive revelation, the people perish. It's saying there's a revelation that you need that keep you alive. It's a revelation that God give you that keep faith in your heart and fear out your life. It ain't, come on, it ain't seeing something out there. It's seeing something in here. Give me some help. Uh, and the Bible says when there's no vision like that, that's what make people perish. That's what make people backslide. That's what make people get afraid because they don't have no, re no, it's not any revelation, redemptive revelation. That is revelation that's connected to the rock. That's Jesus. You see things that Jesus paid for and you have a right to it because it was paid for. On your behalf. Are you following me? Amen. So there, the, so you don't, you don't live above the terror and the fear of the land by saying, I ain't going to be afraid. You can say that all you want to and still be afraid because fear is a spirit. You have to have something that kind of act the spirit of fear. And there are cities you go in where the whole city is fearful. So you come under the cloud of fear. Are you listening to me? There, there, listen, there's something you can get in your ear, a report, and it puts fear in your heart. That's why Psalms 112 say this man's heart is fixed trusting in the Lord and he won't be afraid. He's not even afraid when evil tidings, what is evil tidings? Bad news was told to me, but I still ain't afraid. Why? Because I have a truth that is dominating that truth. It's spiritual and it's the light of God's word. Are you hearing me, abundant life? Huh? So this is where where the power come from being being able to live beyond the threats of diseases, beyond the threats of accidents, beyond uh, the terror of flying 
across the waters and flying wherever or getting on a boat and going somewhere. Talk to me, somebody. Or just cutting all your lights off in the house. Come on, give me some help. <laughs> Whatever you're afraid of. Whatever you're afraid of. Give me some help, somebody. Huh? Uh, how many of you know I need prayer every time a doctor pull out a needle and say, we just need to give you a shot, get some blood out. I say, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Is Jesus in here? <laughs> Needles make me pray. God's man of faith and power cannot stand to see a needle. What I'm trying to tell you, everybody has something that challenges your heart. It doesn't matter what it is. God commands us not to be afraid. Are you listening to me? I told you there are four areas that four things the devil used to impose his will on the life of a believer. He already got sinners now, so they ain't got to do this for them. But on the life of a believer, there are four things he used. Number one, we told you that uh, that fear was used as a, son, a synonym for terror. So fear, number one, he uses fear to impose his will. Why do he want fear in your heart? Because once he gets fear inside of your heart or your thought life, he controls your behavior. He know without faith you can't please God. And when you're full of fear, you are not full of faith. And I don't care how desperate your need may be, God is not obligated to show up until the fear get out your heart. Are you listening to me? So he used fear. Then the next thing we said was frustration. Frustration come on people because of their inability to cope. Your inability to cope. You, you, you got to deal with stuff. And you can't let it get the best of you. If you don't handle frustration right, you find people who start contemplating suicide. Why? I, don't, I can't cope no more. And then some places they check out because they, they just can't deal with the pressure of whatever. You got it? So these things are, are things that the devil used to impose his will on the believer. Then the next thing we told you, not, not only that, for fatigue, this, you're just tired. You make some bad, poor choices when you get too tired. That's why we're encouraged all through the scriptures to wait on the Lord, to rest in the Lord, that there's a rest in the Lord. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He promised rest to the believer. Amen. And you don't, not need, to, you don't need to just rest physically. You have to rest mentally. It can be a challenge sometimes. You can get so tired that, that, that your head keep on talking while your body is laying down. Amen. You got to know how to learn how to make your mind rest. And that come by casting all your cares on him. You got to give stuff to the Lord. Look, Lord, if, this, if you can't handle this while I'm resting, then that I don't need to worry about no how. You got to rest in the Lord. Quieten your mind down. Amen. Your, your mind should be twisted up like a, a like a knot almost. Amen. From nothing but tiredness. And then, of course, we said false doctrine. All right. Now, now that we understand that, let's look at Second uh, Timothy for a moment. And we will pull out of that as passage of scripture, Second Timothy. And. Uh, we're told God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1, and verse 7 of that particular book. Are you learning something here? All right. It'll take, it'll take you on over. I promise you this. It'll take you all over. Hallelujah. 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 Now, you already know there's a root behind fear. Isn't it? Uh, it's a root. And the root of fear is death. That's, that's the root of it. People are afraid to die. Amen. They are. And you, need, you have to get a revelation so, so, so you don't have to be afraid. All right, you got it. Let's read that scripture, verse uh, 7, please. Ready? Read. One more time. Uh, 
For God hath not given us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, watch this, and self-discipline. Everybody say self-discipline. See, that power, love, and a sound mind means self-discipline. You got a role to play in keeping yourself in a place, a posture of, of victory. That means you got to exercise some disciplines in some things. And that means I can't say everything I want to say. Talk to me. I mean, I can't do everything I want to do either. Uh, some things I want to do, the flesh is behind it. Totally. And so do I give in to that or do I, be, do I exercise self-discipline? Well, if you're going to be worth your salt in the kingdom, you will develop some self-discipline. Huh? And that ain't something that the preacher is responsible for for you. That's something you are responsible for as unto the Lord. You have many rights. Paul said, I have plenty of rights, but I don't exercise all my rights because it ain't profitable. Huh? He said, I'm not in bondage. Didn't he say that? Huh? You know, he said, I got the right to do whatever I want to do, but everything I want to do ain't beneficial or profitable for people. Huh? I don't want nobody to lose their salvation over something I'm doing. Lord have mercy, I can't even live for Jesus no more now. You say, people won't say that. Yes, God said they'll say it because you're an epistical. That some, some folks say, unfortunately, they ain't going to never read the Bible. The closest they're going to get to, to the to King James is looking at you. And you become their paper preacher. They're going to read you and they're going to say, OK, that's what God is like and that's what God is not like. God is good. God is bad. God is mean. God, is, God ain't real. They'll, they come up with their own interpretation, too. That's what the Bible said. He put you on display. Huh? Didn't he? Put you on blast. But that's not, that's not negative. That's good. That just means I got to exercise some self-discipline now. I'm not going to cuss you out now. <laughs> One of the reasons I think people are really challenged over when it comes to things and stuff. How I many of you ever asked the question, why did God let this happen? Come on, be honest. Why do, why do bad things happen to good people? Come on now. Well, let me be honest with you. There, there, there are some biblical explanations, I think, that, that whether we want to agree with them or not, that why God allowed things to happen to people and things around us. Number one, if you want to write it down, so it'll help you answer other people. Because people be trying to figure out, you know, why did 9-11 happen? Come on now, how many of you know that? But then they don't ask why I do <laughs> some other thing that took place. They won't ask that, you know. Huh? When all those black folks was marching down there in Alabama. Why did they let police dogs bite women and men and kids and put water holes on? See, they don't even ask that, though. But see, the same God was God in both times. I'm just, I'm just trying to help you see something. Come on now. Huh? Number one, why God let things happen because of man's choice. What I say? If man didn't have choice, a lot of things that we say, why God let it happen? Because man chose to do it. And God have given man what we call free choice. Freedom to make choices. All mankind have that. Good or bad, we have the freedom to make a choice. But sometimes when people see men making choice, they say, why God? Because God gave us choice in the earth. Meaning also that with choices, you already know come consequences. If you make good choices, there's a consequence that comes behind it. We usually enjoy the consequences of good choices. 
We don't like the consequences of bad choices. We want to be able to make choices without consequences, but you can't find that. Because behind every choice, something follow it. And then when we see it happen, we say, why did God allow it? No, God gave you the choice. But let's, let's reel it back for a minute just, just to help you better see that. You go all the way up into the Garden of Eden. You see that God had two children, one named Adam, one named Eve. And the Bible says that the serpent came in the garden, uh, the devil came in the garden as a serpent. And the Bible said that he spoke or talked to the woman. Now, if you read the New Testament, it said the woman was deceived and not the man. You hear Eve talking, but you don't hear Adam saying nothing, meaning what? Adam didn't say nothing. He watched everything go down without saying a word. <laughs> and man still don't like to talk. And the Bible said as a result of that, that it didn't say Eve sinned. It said where one man sinned. Everybody keep trying to blame Eve, but no blame was put on Eve from God. He didn't blame me. He said, Adam, what is this you have done? Doing nothing is doing everything. <laughs> Are you listening to me? You made a choice not to do what I taught you. At least Eve was deceived. If you read the scripture, it said when the serpent said to her, she quoted back to him what God said. She gave the word back. What was the bite, the bait that pulled her in? He told her, said, you're going to be like God. Oh, that's what I want. That's what deceived her. But what did he tell Adam? He didn't tell Adam nothing. Adam just listened to the whole thing and knew the whole thing was wrong and said nothing. By his silence, he took side with the enemy of God. We say why things happened. It started all the way back into God. God gave him a choice. He could have stopped him, couldn't he? But he didn't because he don't stop us today either. It's called choice. Let's go on. All right. Then once we understand that things happen because of man's choice, the next thing we know, need to know because of the mistakes uh, and consequences, or we call it sowing and reaping, that you sow in one season, you reap in another. That ain't bad. That's a law. You can make it bad or you can make it good, depending upon what you want to sow. That's what discipline is all about. I'm sowing to get good things in life, so I got to, I got to sow for it. I can't be sowing all kind of uh, junk and expect a good harvest to come from it. And yet the way the Bible say the thing, the way this earth works now, the long as the earth remains, long as what? Seed time. And then a harvest. You don't get nothing no other way in this earth. Do I need to say that to you again? You don't get anything any other way in this earth except you sow in one season and you reap in another. Why? He says, as long as this earth remains, see time and harvest. What that means? This ain't going to ever change. So then when we, why, things, why did that happen? Somebody sold it. And now you're seeing the harvest come up. Why do good things happen in there? Somebody sold something good. And now the good things are coming. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. Then what's another one that we can say? The, the, the prophetic utterance of God. Things happen because God prophesied that it would be. He said things about these last days, whether we want to read it or not, he have already spoken it. So we can go on like, you know, well, let's listen to what the news got to say. You better listen to what God said, because that's what's going to happen. He told you the news before it got here. Right. Huh? He said before Jesus come, men's heart would fail them for fear. Not because they're sick, because they're afraid. Their heart would pass, would break down in them. So it's got to happen, but it ain't got to happen to us. 
That's what I'm trying to tell you. We're the children of the living God. He that abide in his shadow will say of the Lord, you're my refuge, you're my fortress, you're my God, I trust you. I trust you. And then he said, if you trust me, then you won't be afraid of the air by day. Thousand will fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. It won't come near you. Why? God said, I'm protecting you. Psalm 4 and 8 tell us that safety is of the Lord. God can keep you safe. He says safety is not of government. Safety is not of armed weaponry. Safety is of the Lord. Except the watch, except the Lord watch the city, the watchmen wake in vain. Except God build the house, the builder build in vain. I don't mean to be preaching tonight. I'm t- <laughs> this is Bible study. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you better hear me. Because we got to get in a place that we live beyond this. Because it's here. I like to tell you this is, just, this is it, but it's going to get worse. The, the prophetic utterance of Isaiah the prophet said, rise and shine for your light have come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Listen to what he said, darkness is in the land. Then he said, gross darkness. That is darkness that can be felt. What we call kind of darkness that you can feel. It was the plague that was in Egypt. It's called depression. He said depression will be on people. They walk around like mummies, zombies. Listen to me, but that's not your portion as believers. Why? The light of God's word fills your heart. When God gives you a revelation, God have not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and self-discipline. Which, why is that so important? Self-discipline has to do with what you let go in and out your mind. See, the God, you are the custodian of your mind. You are the custodian of your thought life. Nobody else guards your, the, this here but you. Amen. So self-discipline means I have a right to entertain thoughts and I have a right to replace them. I have the right to entertain thoughts and I have the right to replace them. Some things come in my mind. I don't need to ponder on it. I need to cast it down. As the scripture said, throw that thought out your head, Andrew, for the devil find a place to to build from it. Listen to me. Listen to me. The temptation is not sin. Given into it is. Many temptation thoughts come in our heads as Christians. That's not the sin. The sin is when you give in to it. And some things, because how you just keep meditating, pondering on it, thinking about it, it builds inside of you the capacity to see yourself doing wrong. Wrong don't just happen. You got to plan for it. You got to meditate on it. Listen to me. Uh, are you talking to me tonight? All right. So these things is, is, is why, has to do with why our society live in such fear. You got it? The Lord have said these things. So this is why things happen. The law of sowing and reaping. The, law, the man's choice. Prophetic, the prophetic utterance has already been spoken. There ain't no prayer you can pray if God have prophesied something to come to pass in the earth. You can't pray. You cannot pray that away. You, you can't pray God's will from not being done. You pray his will be done. So how do we know what his will is? We done read the book. We're not going by feelings or chance, are we? Then what's the next one? The next one is the devil is in the earth. A lot of things happen because Satan is in the earth and he has a he, he has a uh, his lease is not up yet. Amen. Amen. The Bible called him the prince of the power of air. Listen to what it says. The spirit that now work in the children of disobedience. 
So not only he's the prince of the power of the air, but he is the spirit that fosters disobedience in people's lives. Huh? I mean, you know, you were disobedient a whole lot before you came to Jesus. Well, somebody was helping you because you know your mom and dad told you not to do those things. But you were getting help to do it anyhow. Where was that help coming from? The devil himself. He'd been knowing you a long time. <laughs> huh? And that's why when it show up, he know what you like. Talk to me, somebody. He, he said, the devil's tempted me. <laughs> yes, and when he tempt you, it's a real temptation. He ain't going it ain't a temptation to tempt you when it ain't, it don't affect. Uh, I ain't thinking about that. Well, that, show ain't, that ain't your temptation. Because your temptation, you think about it. It's real. Huh? He know what men like. Period. Guess what? You know what women like too. Let me give you equal, equal opportunity there. Huh? And so when he come, he come in a way, he, he listen, look how he came. He didn't come in there, you know, Hollywood got all kind of imagery and pictures they show of the devil. But when you read the Bible, you can't find none of them that he came in. And notice he have the ability to come inside of things and to talk through it. Animals or whatever. He can go in it and talk through it. Give me some help here. He went inside of a serpent, the Bible says, because it was more subtle. Read that. He's more crafty. He's more cunning. Talk to me. He's more trick tricky. He came through something that had, had skill to get that woman attention and hold her. And conversated with her. And the Bible doesn't say he crawled in there. He walked in there. So at that time, the serpent had feet on it. To God cursed it because of the deception and said, from here on out, you're going to crawl and dust will be your dinner for the rest of your days on planet Earth. Amen. Boy, when God put it on you, you can't rise up, can you? <laughs> he said, snakes, you're going to eat dirt forever for letting the devil use your body. I don't care what you feed them, they're going to eat some dirt. <laughs> Why God said so, didn't he say so? <laughs> uh, you read that word when it says subtlety. It had, he said it, he, he came with enchantment. Enchantment. Sorcery was there. The day we'll say he was a magician, a witchcraft, you'll call him a sorcery or whatever your name, all that'll be the same thing. And when he gets you, that's how he come today. That's why he like you high. Because it opened your mind up to his lies. And you're more subtle. You're more susceptible to his lies when he gets you high. Amen, somebody. Uh -huh, huh? You drink some of that Jack Daniel if you want to. Lord have mercy. He will jack you up with it. And anything else you want to put in your mouth. You've been blessed this evening. <laughs> have you? <laughs> Lift that head up right now and say, God have not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and self-discipline. It is my responsibility to be the custodian over my thought life. The way, you, the way you receive any spirit, faith, fear, love, joy, peace, it doesn't matter. You must yield to that spirit to be filled by that spirit. I choose not to yield to fear. I choose to yield to faith. I choose to walk in the love of God. I receive comfort by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're my rock, my refuge, my, my, my king, my redeemer. I choose to live for you, to serve you, and to live under your protection. These are the days that you have made. 
And I will rejoice and be glad. In the midst of darkness, I choose to be a shining light. Thank you, Father, for the light of the righteous will get brighter and brighter until the coming of the Lord. Well, praise God, everybody. The Lord bless you. Father, it is with great praise and adoration we say thank you for the times that we're living in. It's the same as how you spoke to Esther. You said that you brought her to the kingdom for such a time like this. Lord, we could have lived in the Victorian age. We could have been born there. You could have chose for that to happen, and we would have been in that time of, 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 of society. We could have been there when the horses and the buggies are only rode the highways and the roads of our land. But God, you kept us for the jet age. You kept us here in the times that we're living in now. And so we are built for the times. We've been engineered by God. For where, the, for where we had in our life. And so we say thank you, sir, that all that we've been through, it doesn't matter what you've been through in this place tonight, I want to declare it to you under the unction of the Holy Ghost. For all that you've been through in life, everything you've been through, he who loved you and called you is making it work together for your good. And he will use it for his own glory. It wasn't by happenstance or chance that these things happened to you in life. Even as a believer, you have experienced certain things, certain things that have affected your faith, have affected your worship, have affected your walk with God. But even in the midst of that, the Lord had made the crooked places straighten out and the rough places smooth out. And so you will see that he works all things after the counsel of his own will and that he predetermined all things from the beginning. He declared the end. And so you are here in this time of society of 2015 because your steps were ordered by the Lord and he has preserved you for this hour. You're built to last. You're built to last. You're built to make it. You're built to finish. You're built to conquer and you're built to win. So fear not, said the spirit, and be not afraid. For as the Lord declared to Joshua, so he declared to you this evening. For the Lord your God is with you wheresoever you go. For the fear of man is a snare unto you. Be not afraid of any man. For fear him who have the keys of both heaven and hell. So walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. I've called you out. I've called you out, I've set you apart, and my gifts and my callings are without repentance. I will never change my mind about my plan for you, said the Spirit, for I built you for this time. I built you for this season. So rise and shine, for your light have come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God.